Hi everyone. Uh, we are at the 20th of July, uh, Monday morning, quarter to 11. Now, this is the painting that uh, I commenced with, with you in our last Zoom session. That's the mark making exercise. Now, I've stopped it at this point. Um, reason being is that there are uh, some interesting focal points already uh, and um, that I might uh, might be able to develop or to progress a bit further forward. Now, um, if there wasn't, if I didn't have anything at this stage, I would continue the process of mark making. So I'd be putting another layer over it um, and then stopping and then scanning it once again for any um, implicit shapes, forms or images. No real images at this stage, but there's some, there's some potential shapes that I can work on. Okay, here we are with a close-up and I just want to give a minute or two to scanning this work to identify the where, where the focal points are, uh, the potential areas that could be developed. Now, what is a focal point? Real, well, really, it's just a grouping of marks and shapes that seem to resonate beyond just the phys physicality of the paint. Okay, so um, they're suggestive, suggestive of shape or something that we recognize, but we may not know what that is. Okay, so for instance, this area here, I'm just drawing this with charcoal uh, to you know, point out areas of interest so that that would be that area there would be a focal point. Um, this one, this area down here is another. Um, obviously, this one because of its figurative potential. Um, where else? Maybe this would be another focal point uh, because of the. Uh, the, these shapes here that almost look like, um, you know, burnt trees in an Australian bush. Uh, and maybe this is another focal point here. So, you know, at, at, this, at this stage of the work, we, we scan it and try and identify groupings of marks that, for whatever reason, seem to be suggestive of something... Uh, remembered um, so, something known that we've you know seen before here's here's possibly another one this is quite a strong figurative one just here okay so we can see the areas marked in charcoal that are the obvious focal points now um, be, you know, because of the groupings uh, of the marks, they're suggestive of something we don't know what. Now, in addition to um, to those hot spots or focal points, there's uh, a another uh, issue that we might uh, take notice of, which is uh, directional forces or directional lines or directional forces. Now, with the edge of the raw sienna here, uh, you can see quite a strong diagonal, which is then picked up by this lighter colour, so there's so we, we have quite a strong force moving from right to left down into the middle of the or towards the middle distance. Now that force is then stopped by this red line here, uh, and then that red line redirects our eye uh, down towards this part of the composition. Um, notice also that uh, this this red color is rhymed or picked up by these strokes here. So, you know, there's once again, there's a, a directional or, or a, almost a rhythmic force uh, coming, coming down to this bottom section of the picture. So that may be something that you can um, work on too with, with your own studies. Uh, now, also we have a horizon here, which seems to be in the deeper space going behind this this figure so 
So there again, there's another directional movement that that's uh, useful in uh, making the eye uh, transition from one area to the next. So I'm now going to get rid of these charcoal marks and move back into the work with more substantial marks in paint this time. Okay, um, charcoal very useful in this process because you can put it on and take it off uh, just to try out some ideas, see how they work and then you're back to square one again um, just by dusting it off. So I've got some black paint mixed up here, a grey and some black, and I'm now going to consolidate uh, some of those burnt tree shapes. Now I don't want to illustrate trees, I just want to build, I want to keep the, uh, the image as such ensconced in the mark, or in other words I want the, the mark to drive the image rather than the other way around. So. Um, there we go, we've got that diagonal that I spoke about before. Now here we've got this horizontal, which is quite useful. Now we'll pick it up again there. Um, may be able to do something there. So now we've got two, uh, or two or three strong movements and counter movements. One this way, one with the red mark that way, and then stopped by this line and, and coming down into the uh, middle ground and foreground. In fact, almost bringing us over to this figurative shape here. Okay, I'm now back with some naphthol crimson and I'm going to <clears throat> endeavour to strengthen some of those directional lines and also bring out a little bit more some of those figurative, figurative um, shapes. Okay, so this is just, once again, playing, um, not getting too carried away with finding images, but more, more shapes and directions at this stage. That's, they look a bit strong there, so I might sh put those back a little bit. <clears throat> now here's a, here's a potential image here. Okay, this, this one, pretty obvious. Um, not sure about this shape up here, so I'm, I might just leave that. Now, there may not be enough here to continue working within this particular layer, within this particular iteration. I'm starting to feel like I'm running out of possibilities here. So if you're starting to feel like that about the work that you're currently on, then the next thing to do is obviously just to uh, continue adding more layers, trashing it. Okay, if, you know, you, you, if you've reached a dead end, if it's stalled, then the next thing to do is to um, continue the layering process. So I'm really, by putting this red on, I'm almost creating another, another layer, <clears throat> um, you know, cancelling or working over the top of, of the existing layer. <clears throat> So that, there's that figure, and that's that's pretty much got cancelled. This figure here, I'll cancel that as well. Now it may, they may reappear. They're, you know, they're not necessarily gone for good, 
um, but what I'm what I'm now looking at is continuing to build the surface when I was working on these forms I was working on the image okay and that went to a dead end so now I'm back to building the surface and creating the possibility for more shapes and forms to emerge emerge through the process this is where the process will hopefully gift um, possibilities Don't forget your edges. Edges are important. So that's, you know, by breaking up that existing layer, uh, we've, you know, now got a, a whole lot of new possible uh, shapes and forms to work with. So, you know, it's just um, those three things, working on your colour, working on building your surface and um, looking for any, any um, shapes and forms that the process is gifting you. Okay, I'm going to wrap this video up uh, with this final painting, or this final stage of the painting. Now, yes, I could take it a lot further, uh, but you can see that uh, we've got two, two figurative forms here. I'm pretty happy with those. That's as, that's as representational as I, I really want to get. Um, you've still got the reference to landscape uh, and a deeper space up in this top third. Uh, and I think the mark making is privileged in such a way that it's not subservient to the image um, which is you know i think quite a good balance okay folks i hope this helps and i look forward to seeing you this coming friday uh, at zoom